Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a, another book review. I just seem to be reading books really quickly lately. Um, I mean, it's a good thing because I'm obviously getting through my to be read shelf and that also means that at some point I will be doing another book haul. Um, but yeah, today I'll be reviewing Go Online On Tour by Zoe Sugg. So this is Zoe's second book. Um, I read her first book around January of last year and I really loved that. I gave it five out of five stars. I just thought, I thought the writing, even though the writing was maybe a little bit younger than I would usually read. I will link my original review for the first book on the screen and down below if you want to check that out. Um, if you think you might want to read that and start the series. Um, so yeah, this is her second book. I got this just before Christmas. Um, I bought it on Wardstones because it is a signed copy, which is very exciting. Um, and yeah, so in the first book, Penny meets Noah um, in New York and it ends with them being really happily in love and things, she's obviously got to go back to England and you don't know how their relationship's going to withstand or withstand them being apart and having a really long distance relationship. So I'll read you the back of the book first to sort of give you the premise of this book. It says, when Noah invites Penny on his European music tour, she can't wait to spend time with her rock god boyfriend. But between Noah's jam-packed schedule, less than welcoming bandmates and threatening messages from jealous fans, Penny wonders whether she's really cut out for life on tour. She can't help but miss her family, her best friend Elliot, and her blog, Girl Online. So, obviously, after um, her relationship blew up um, with Noah, she stopped writing her blog. This band has been invited to go out on a European tour and flow and support one of these other bigger bands. So, he asked Penny if she wants to go with him on tour because it's over her summer holidays. Um, she agrees. Her parents agree eventually and she can't wait to spend the summer with him and visit all these different cities with him. So in the first book I felt like I could relate to Penny in the sense because she was single, she was like looking for love and at the time so was I. Now I can relate to this as being in a relationship, especially in a long term relationship. Um, obviously they are very different relationships um, and obviously this is made up and he's famous. But I could relate to that in that way and having to deal with long distance. So um, you see um, Penny's still really good friends with um, Elliot um, and he's got his boyfriend now and they're together and it's all going well for them. In the last book you see um, Megan really be quite bitchy and turn on um, Penny and then in this book they start to sort of mend their relationship um, when Noah's band plays in Brighton, she ends up having a panic attack and Megan's the one that pulls her out and takes her home and makes sure she's alright. Which I thought was, to start with, I was a bit unsure. I was like, is this something she's doing to try and get closer to Noah and the band? Is it like, has she got a false um, intentions for this? Um, but no, she was sort of being genuinely nice. And yeah, so Penny goes on tour with them and she's a bit unsure of some of his bandmates, especially his best friend Blake. They just don't get on very well together at the start. So obviously things aren't going to go plain sailing for Penny. Um, she's still sort of dealing with her anxiety and being travelling and that, which her anxiety isn't mentioned, I would say, as much as probably in the first book. But it's it still remains there and you still see her journey with it. Um, Penny starts to get messages. While she's in Brighton, her phone gets lost and stolen. And um, she then starts getting these messages um, from someone um, claiming to be the real truth. And they're essentially trying to blackmail Penny, um, get her and Noah to break up and all these different things, um, like threatening her with pictures and stuff like that, that's going to expose them. And she's obviously quite worried about this, but Noah's like, we'll take care of it. The, like, our manager will take care of it, it'll be fine. Um, I mean, every band has haters and people that just want to drag everyone down. Um, so yeah, that's something that sort of is a little storyline in the book. And you don't really find out about that until quite at the end. Um, 
but yeah it's very gripping I did read this really quickly like in two or three days at the first book I just enjoy the writing of Zoe and then I'm assuming she still had her ghostwriter help her with this um I would say I wouldn't say it's better than the first book but I'd say it's definitely on par with it um I didn't feel it was any less good than the first book I thought um there was somewhere that the book could go it wasn't just like she was making another book just to get money and stuff like the storyline had places to go and you could develop the story and the characters um and it was interesting to see how Noah and Penny um dealt with their relationship on the road so if you are about to start reading this then you probably x out this video because the rest of the book might contain spoilers but chances are if you're watching this you've already read the book and um, obviously the first one um so i will carry on so one thing i thought on this is a, a sentence in the book where it goes penny thinks she has like nothing to contribute while she's there like some of the other girlfriends of the band members are like makeup artists and stuff and she feels like She's just sort of tagging along and doesn't really have anything to do. But it's very clear that she still is into her photography and stuff. And I, at that point, I did think maybe towards the end, Noah's going to say, come on the road and be our photographer. Because she is quite talented. And obviously, she took the photo for Leah's album cover. And, yeah, but that sort of never really came into anything. And I think possibly that would have been somewhere it could have gone for the next book. Um... I don't know. I do think there is a next book. I think I read somewhere that she's making a third book. I don't really know where it could go with the third book, to be honest. Um, I think if it continues with touring or something like that, it's going to be very sort of samey to this. Um, so I think it's got to go in a completely different direction and have new challenges for the couple. Um, I don't know if it's in all of the books or if like it does say it's just a bonus chapter for the Wardstones but at the end you see Penny gets um, invited by a photographer to come to a studio and he offers her an apprenticeship so I think that's obviously somewhere where this the third book could go is like maybe she's the one now starting to get recognised recognition and a little bit of fame and maybe no one wouldn't like that so much that's just like an idea for the third book um of what like what i predict some things could happen but i think there's a good chance that following noah and her um penny and her apprenticeship is the way the third book might go so i feel like the sort of blackmailing by this the real truth is a little bit like pretty little lies which i found quite funny so there's a couple times in this book where you're actually really disappointed in noah and you're like you want to say to him like get your act together treat her like you should um because obviously there are a lot of things that come with being in a band and a lot of um things you have to do like press and all that and there was a lot of times where he said he was planning to do something with penny they were supposed to go out and he either overslept because he went out with his mates the night before and got totally drunk or obviously he had things to do with the band that he couldn't get out of um, so he had to cancel last minute with Penny and you just felt sorry for Penny because she's taken the chance and faced like all her fears with anxiety to get there and to support him and she understands that he has all these things that he needs to um, do um, and obviously because of the contract he has with this band but at the same time she wants to just have a bit of alone time with him and just do some of the normal sightseeing stuff there's one moment where she literally explodes in the lobby at him she shouts at him and all he does he doesn't say anything he just turns walks away and gets in a cab and you're just so frustrated with him it's like man up and just like apologize or say something don't just walk away that's like the worst thing you could do and you just felt really disappointed in him um and then obviously leah comes to the rescue and um treats her to a lovely afternoon which is nice that she has that girl companion again at first i thought is this a little bit fake um because obviously noah and leah had that fake relationship going on but no she was actually being genuinely nice to her which was good to see that she had a friend to rely on when she was on tour um, so one night, um, Penny's in the elevator and 
Noah's best friend Blake, the drummer I think of the band, he comes in and he starts like flirting with her and he tries to kiss Penny. She backs away and instantly runs away from him and obviously because Blake is so drunk he goes to Noah, he doesn't want to be like kicked off the tour of anything so he makes up the lie that Penny came on to him um, and then later Penny decides to go find Noah and tell him what happened like because she did, never really wanted to, to come between Blake and Noah's relationship she didn't want him to have to choose between her and his best mate um, she understood like that there were boundaries there and she overheard a conversation where they were with their manager, Noah, Blake, and then their manager were in the room. And the manager was saying, look, being with such a young girl, it's not good publicity, um, mainly because like it's always good for a male singer to look like he's single and have all the girls be heartthrobs. And she overhears this and stumbles in the room and um, Blake's obviously made up this lie Noah's like, how could you make this up? How could you like try and get my attention like that? He's like, I know I haven't been paying as much attention as I should you, but like he was like really pissed off that she supposedly went and tried to make a move on Blake. Um, and then Penny, after all that and that explodes, Penny decides to leave. Um, luckily, Elliot comes to the rescue, meets her in Paris, and like saves a bit of their trip. So, Penny is now having to deal with their relationship breaking up, it being spewed all over the tabloids, which is probably the worst thing, considering she's just like, she didn't choose the fame, like, she's just a normal girl, she's not the one who's famous, and then to see that all spread across papers and tabloids and magazines, like, it can't be nice. And then, um, Noah and his band come to play at a festival, and he... Penny reaches out to him and asks if he wants to meet up and talk and they somewhat try and mend their relationship and um, in that time Blake does confess to Noah that he was drunk and that he was the one that made the move on Penny. Um, Penny still really hurt the fact that Noah took his friend's side instead of her side which I mean any girl would be really annoyed at that. Um, and she doesn't know if they can really move past that and then um and he's like oh you can just stay in the tour bus while while i'm on stage and all that and then his manager dean comes in and she overhears a conversation where obviously he confesses that he's trying to set noah up with a like another woman like famous person in another fake relationship and basically he was the one that took penny's phone he was the one that was trying to break them up and um, sending the messages and blackmailing her so she's just like furious at him but like he's obviously thinks he's got away with it little does he know that Noah is listening behind him and it's like that bittersweet moment because you just want to punch Dean in the face and then Noah fires him and you're like so glad that's over this time as well Alex and Elliot broke up and there is a really sweet moment at the end where Alex um, does this really grand gesture. He um, has come out as gay and he wants to like make things work again between him and Elliot. And he like decorates his bandstand and has all these twinkly lights and he gathers all his friends and family. And Noah is there to sing their song. Um, and then that's obviously when Noah and Penny get back together. It was a very cute and like made you feel really bubbly inside um, ending. You do think there is going to be a next book, although it definitely could just be left at two books. It was sort of, at the end, left a bit unresolved, and I think that's why it's going to, it leads on to a third book, is because you don't know how their relationship's going to follow from that, because he's still got his world tour to go on. She is eventually going to have to go back to school and do her A-levels, and it's like, where is, where is, are things going to go for them? Um, that's why I think there is a third book. Um, and yeah, so I did really enjoy this book. If you've read the first one, don't worry about reading the second one and it might not be as good because I think it definitely is good. I felt in this book especially like I wasn't reading Zoe the YouTuber's book. It just felt like I was reading Zoe the author, um, her book. I didn't feel like she was really... Like she's created this little world of 
Noah and Penny and I think it's just very cute. Um, it definitely would appeal to a younger audience, like if you were 14, like around that age. Um, but also, you know, I'm 19 and I really enjoyed reading this book. So if there is a third one, I would pick it up. Um, and yeah, so if you've read this one or the first one, let me know what you think. Um, and yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.